What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. In this video, we'll talk about how to read hitters on defense. And this video was suggested by Eden Morris, so thank you so much for this video suggestion. Before you continue watching this video, make sure that you watch my video about how to dig hard driven spikes, because that video talks about how to control the ball on defense. And you can watch that video by clicking on the link up here. Before you learn how to read hitters, you also need to learn about specific defensive formations against the most common attacks, such as the quick set down the middle, also called the one attack, the high ball to the left, which is called a four, and the high ball to the right side, which is called a five set. The reason why it's important to have consistent defensive formations is because it gives each person a specific zone and role to cover in defense. For example, one person's main priority is to dig the roll shot and the tips, Another person's priority is to dig the line attack, and another person's priority is to dig the angle attack. When you have assigned roles, it helps make your defense more consistent and efficient. If you don't have these type of assigned roles and consistent defensive formations, then you're going to have all six people making independent reads. For example, if someone tries to read the tip that falls short, then everyone will go short and no one's there ready in case the ball is pushed deeper. There's also no way that one person can cover the entire court by themselves. So it's very important to know your zone and defense. And yes, there might be some overlap. You might have two people reading the same thing, but you don't want everyone committed to one type of attack. If you want to learn about specific defensive formations to defend against a four attack, quick hit in the middle, and right side attack, make sure that you click on the video links up here. Now we'll talk about general principles of how to read hitters on defense. The first principle is for the defender to be completely still when the spiker contacts the ball. Once you move into the correct defensive formation, you'll probably have to move because the ball might change direction off the block or the hitter might change direction slightly off the wrist and you might have to move side to side or forward or backward. If you're moving while the ball is being spiked, you have all this momentum going in one direction and you can't change direction in any other way. Moving while the ball is spiked also adds extra energy to the ball, so it will be more difficult for you to control the ball because you're adding all this force with your bodily momentum. So make sure that you're completely still and balanced at the point of contact so you can change direction and have a much better chance of reacting to the spike. The only time you should be moving as the spiker is contacting the ball is if you're reading a tip or a roll shot very early, and we'll talk about why that's important much later, but that's the only exception to the rule. The second principle is learning how to read body language of the hitter. The first body language you should be looking for for the hitter is the angle of their spiking approach. If the outside hitter is loaded inside the court, then most likely they will hit straight ahead because that's where all their momentum is going. It's also much more challenging to change direction and hit away from their body. And if they do, it's going to be a much weaker spike, which will give you more time to react to that ball. If the hitter tends to start their approach wide, meaning tends to have an angular approach, then most likely they will be spiking in the angle because it will be much more challenging for them to change direction down the line. Remember that most of the spiking power comes from your approach. As long as you can see what angle they are approaching the ball, then you should have a good idea of where they will be spiking. The second body language you should look for is where the hitter is facing before they are spiking. As long as you can keep an eye on the hitter's chest and shoulders, you should know where they will be spiking the ball. This is somewhat related to the approach because most people tend to approach in one direction and face the same direction. For some hitters, they might approach in one direction and then face another direction to be deceptive. So you have to watch for both the approach and also where they will be facing.
Also, if I'm facing one direction, it will be very difficult for me to generate power by changing direction in another way. Your first priority is to position yourself to dig the hardest and fastest spike first and then allow yourself to react to any change of direction because any time a spiker changes direction, the spike will be a little bit weaker than if they hit where they're facing. The third body language you can look for is hitter tendencies. Every hitter has their favorite spot to spike, whether it be down the line, angle, or in the seam. It's important for you as a defender to keep track of all the hitters and where they like to hit. Another way I like to look at it as a defender is the first time someone spikes an area and I don't dig it is skill. The second time it's a pattern. The third time they make it there is completely my fault because I haven't adjusted to the hitter tendency. In this video analysis, you will see that the outside hitter on the opposing team was able to spike the ball hard down the line and slightly inside from the sideline. Now that I've kept mental notes about where this hitter likes to hit, the next time the outside hitter got set, I shifted my outside hitter line defense slightly inside in hopes that he will hit the exact same spot that he did last time, and that's where he ended up spiking. If I didn't make that adjustment, the ball would have traveled too quickly for me to react. Once you can keep track of every hitter's tendency, you will be able to read them a lot earlier and dig a lot more balls that way. The third principle of defense I'll talk about is staying in the funnel. A funnel is an object that takes a large amount of liquid and then directs the liquid into a single streamline. It essentially helps direct the liquid to where you want it to go. In the same sense, your blockers are your funnels. The blockers are trying to funnel the ball to you, so they're going to take away space on one side in hopes of directing the ball to another part of the court. And all you have to do is to make sure that you move in the funnel. You don't want to dig behind the blockers, you always want to dig around the blockers. Occasionally at the highest level when the block is completely closed, then you can stay deep behind the blocker because you're anticipating a ball that is spiked high off the hands and then will fall a lot deeper than normal. Other than that, you should always try to stay in the funnel, around or in between the block in the seam. This is especially important for middle back to find the seams and the gaps in the block because that's where the ball will be funneled if a good hitter sees a hole in the block. If you have a double block up against the outside hitter or the right side hitter, the middle back should step forward a little bit because whenever there's a hole, most spikers will try to spike in the seam and a little bit more downward. So you need to step up slightly for that type of spike. Another good time to take a few steps forward to try to dig a more downward type of spike is against a single block. Whenever there is one blocker, most spikers will try to spike a little more downward because they will know they only have one blocker and a lot more space to hit in. So in that situation, a middle back or an angle digger should step forward slightly to try to dig a more downward spike.
Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you like this video and share it with all of your volleyball friends who are trying to learn how to read hitters on defense. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'll be releasing weekly volleyball tutorial videos just like this one. If you have any other questions regarding volleyball, athletic training, or fitness, make sure that you look through my YouTube channel before providing a video suggestion. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.